Hey everybody, how's it going? So we're going to do another Orca Slicer Quick Dip video tonight. We're going to cover two different features. We're going to talk about how to reduce stringing uh, using some of the slicer settings uh, with an Orca Slicer. Uh, and then we're also going to talk about modifiers real briefly. Uh, uh, it handles Orca Slicer, it handles it maybe a little differently, certainly differently than Idea Maker does and probably a bit differently than some of the other slicers do. So we'll talk about those. This won't take very long. Uh, and and then um, in, in the last video we talked about how to control your seam. Uh, you can paint on your seam. You can control your seam gap. There's lots of cool little features on here. I'll if you haven't watched that video, I'll leave it in the corner somewhere. I'll leave it in the corner. You can click on it after you don't have to click on it now. Um, watch this one. Make sure you subscribe and give me a thumbs up and all the good stuff. And then go back and watch another video if you want. You don't have to watch them in order. It doesn't matter. So, stringing. Uh, two things to be aware of, obviously, with stringing. Like, the, the, the table stakes for stringing is travel speed and temperature. Um, so, I would say if you're getting stringing on a part that you've been printing over and over, over and over again, I would first look at your, maybe something got wackadoodle blown out of proportion with your travel speeds. So, under the speed setting here, under your processes, Here's travel speed. So default travel speed or max travel speed for like an Ender or CR10. Most of the Corality stuff uh, is about 150 millimeters a second, maybe 180, just depends. Um, you can actually kind of put any number in here you want, as high as you want to go. Uh, you're going to be limited by uh, by how fast the stepper motor can turn and what the firmware says it can do. Anyway, so all that's going to do is mess with your estimated time, right, if you do that. Because uh, it'll think it's traveling faster than it really is. So, um, but definitely if it's something low, like it's a, if it's 50, if it's 75, something like that, it got knocked down really low, that can cause stringy, right? So if you have your printhead moving around, it stops and it's going to move across a hole um, to start your, uh, the next portion of the print and it, and it moves slowly, then you're basically just like sort of drawing a piece of filament across, you're almost bridging a piece of filament across that hole. So you want it to come around, you want it to stop and you want it to shoot over to the next spot. And the faster it shoots over, the less stringing you'll have. Second thing is to check your temperature. So like in my particular case, I'm working with the same filament I work with over and over and over again. I got a weird batch. Uh, and this, the first third of this particular roll I'm on right now was fantastic. No problems. Easy peasy. Looks like butter. Prints like butter. Uh, and then the, and then about the second third of the roll, <coughs> I started getting a bunch of strain. So maybe I picked up some moisture. Uh, I'm not really sure, but something's different about the middle of the roll versus the outside of the roll. Uh, so I just came back in, tweaked one setting. Uh, if you come up here into your filament, you hit the modify button. And I, I simply changed my temperature and moved it down 10 degrees. Moved it down 10 degrees, stringing gone. So check your temperature, check your travel speeds first for when it comes to stringing. Then, if you're still having problems with stringing across the part, so specifically when you're crossing an open an open portion of, the, of your part, right? An open hole, um, an open gap, something like this. Um, then you need to actually come down and tick another box. So if we look look in your slicer real fast, so if you slice your part, and we'll let this thing go, and you have this travel ticked here, right? The blue lines are all your travels. So you can see how it's traveling across the part. So every time it's traveling across this open hole, is an opportunity for a stringing to occur. Um, it's pretty common, right? Most slicers show this in some view or another, but that's where you see it here in Orca Slicer. And so this is exactly where I was getting the stringing, right, going on. So if you're really struggling with it, it's really becoming sort of an issue with this part. And it's really, if you're, and if you're using like PETG or you're using TPE or TPU, like an inherently stringy material, then you can change something by coming over here to the quality tab and you just shoot down here to the bottom and say avoid crossing wall. Right, and that basically, that's basically the same one as saying, you know, keep the nozzle within the printed surface, right, within the printed area. So if we take that or resize the plate, uh, we make sure we have our travels checked. Now you can see, right, you've only got certain areas over here where it's crossing over. It's not crossing through this hole anymore, uh, which is really good. Um, uh, you are still going to have some crossing here. You kind of don't have a choice in this particular part. Uh, but it will greatly reduce the amount of stringing, visible stringing in any way, uh, in the part. You know, it, it comes at a price. So I think that was two hours and 14 minutes or two hours and 16 minutes before we sliced it with the other, with this setting turned off. So it bumps up about 10 minutes because it had extra travel moves running around the part. So just something to be aware of, but it will greatly increase the quality of your part if you are tackling some stringing, trying to tackle some stringing issues. So that's the first piece. Second piece is modifiers. Um, so the way that Orca handles modifiers is uh, is kind of cool. Uh, so if we go ahead and delete this part, I'm going to go ahead and add a primitive here. So if you right click anywhere in here, you can say add primitive. I'm going to add a cylinder. 
Uh, I'm going to go up here and scale this this guy. I'm just going to blow this up this way and, I don't know, blow this up that way like that. And then I'm going to right click on that part and I'm going to say add modifier. And I'm going to add another cylinder. And now it's telling you, hey, switch to per object setting mode to edit modifier settings. So automatically, right, normally you're, you're ticked over here on global. It will switch you over to objects mode and that allows you to, to, to select between the different objects on your build plate and modify the settings. So hit OK here. I'm going to go ahead and scale this thing again. I'm going to go ahead and scale him up. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and oof, just do something like so. So I'm just going to sort of overlap these parts like this. So with this part selected, my, we'll call this my main part selected, I'm going to go ahead and keep my default print settings. Um, maybe what I'll do, though, is that from a quality perspective, I'm going to go ahead and turn on or strength, sorry, under strength. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and add some top shells because there are none under my the, the previous settings. Um, and I'll leave it right there. And then we're going to go ahead and flick over to this guy. And I'm going to go ahead and change. Um, I'm just going to change the top surface pattern. I'm going to go ahead and change this over to... Uh, oh, we're going to pick this guy. And then I'll also change um, this to 50%. And I'm going to go ahead and now slice this. And now you can see where those two parts overlapped. I'll go ahead and turn travel off just to make this easier. But where those two parts overlap, now we have where those settings take effect. Uh, and if we roll this dial up and down, you can see where... Uh, this part of it is hollow because I had zero infill turned on. I had 50% infill turned on here uh, and roll it up and down that way. So uh, that's pretty cool. You can definitely see the change at the top uh, and all that good stuff. If we go ahead and back this out one more time and you want to do something like add um, fuzzy skin, you go to others and you make sure that your modifier part is selected. You can say contours, re-slice the plate. Uh, and so now you can see that just that portion of the part where they overlapped, you now have fuzzy skin turned on, uh, and you also have the, the, the top surface pattern there. So, kind of kind of um, kind of cool. I kind of like it. Uh, easy for sure um, to to um, to add modifiers and select and change things around. Um, so anyway, there you go. Um, like and subscribe. Don't forget to go back and watch one of these videos over here. Um, and um, drop a comment and let me know if there's something else you want to see, if there's something you're curious about. Um, I'm happy to do a deep dive and uh, check it out. So thanks a lot. Talk to you all later.